Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Delicious. If you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe so that you guys are updated on my second hair transplant journey progress, as well as video topics covering current hair loss treatments in the pipeline. Make sure to check out my website at hairlicious.com to follow my current hair loss treatment regimen, which includes micro needling and derm rolling, DH fucking shampoo and serum, low level laser therapy cap, hair growth supplements, and a few other products that are known to help those suffering from hair loss. Now, one of the questions that I've been getting is why am I not taking RU58841 and why am I taking Finasteride instead? Um, I did talk about RU a couple times over the past few years on my channel, as well as its efficacy on treating hair loss. RU is a topical anti-androgen that has been around for the past few decades, starting from the early 1990s. It was effective at treating various androgen-related disorders, including acne, hair loss, uh, hirsutism, which is excessive hair. And as a non-steroidal anti-androgenic compound, RU binds to the androgen receptors and it directly inhibits the effects of endogenous androgens such as testosterone and DHT. This is different from finasteride because finasteride works specifically by inhibiting something known as 5-alpha reductase, which is the notorious enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT. And as you guys are aware, DHT is the main cause for genetic hair loss. And with one milligram of finasteride inhibiting nearly 70% of scalp and serum DHT levels, finasteride users may experience various side effects, usually them being sexual. Um, as a result of you know, finasteride affecting an individual on a systemic level. But since RU is an anti-androgenetic compound, it works by inhibiting the local androgen receptors at the hair follicles. Uh, it doesn't inhibit 5-alpha reductase from androgen conversions. It basically prevents DHT from um, literally attaching to the hair follicles. And as a result, there are several studies that are proposing that RU does not affect systemic hormonal levels, which means that they're not going to have any side effects like it does with finasteride. Later on, you'll realize that this is not the case. Um, I'm going to be explaining to you guys later on. And the thing is, there's not a whole lot of studies on RU since it appears that the rights for RU was transferred and I couldn't find any existing studies on side effects um, and also long-term usage. But we do know that from several published studies, RU is going to work far superior than finasteride. Um, at least on animal studies. And when it was compared with finasteride, it showed that it led to a 103% increase when comparing the population of antigen follicles to vellus follicles, whereas finasteride observed an average of 180%. There are people that use RU58841 for treating genetic hair loss and claim to have great success in hair growth. Um, and also, not only does it supposedly not affect DH levels, it supposedly works better than finasteride. So with a lot of positive testimonials online and from hair loss forums, um, the number one reason why I don't take RU58841 is because of safety reasons. In my opinion, it's a bit strange that such promising treatment hasn't undergone through uh, you know, full clinical trials for commercialization. There hasn't been any long-term studies on safety other than what we can see from users claim to have used it for, you know, for many years without having any issues. Um, it's also not FDA approved and it's also classified as a chemical with research only usage which means you need to find a reputable company with confirmed purity. Apparently RU is also not supposed to go systemic like I've mentioned earlier, but there are reports of people suffering from side effects as a result of taking it. It does have a short half-life, about one hour, but users have complained about chest pain, you know, numbness, uh, heart issues, and they've even made you know numerous threats on hair loss forms talking about side effects. It does have similar chemical structures to nilutamide, which is also related to flutamide, and they are all non-steroidal anti-androgens. Side effects for these related non-steroidal anti-androgens include sexual dysfunction as well, uh, breast tenderness, lung problems, and a bunch of other side effects, which make it plausible that even RU can also go systemic unlike the contrary where we initially believed that it did not. And in the case for nilutamide, I actually did some studies and there's been a reported 2% of patients in controlled clinical trials with interstitial pneumonitis, which is a serious lung condition that can cause permanent lung scarring. And in another small study in Japanese patients, there was 17% of patients who also developed the same issue. Now, they're not exactly the same chemical compound, but they do share very similar chemical structures. And with people reporting, you know, various side effects from taking RU, there is that high possibility that RU isn't going to go without any side effects. Uh, one thing to also note is that RU has an affinity that is about, uh, I think it was about 30 times higher than that of other non-steroidal antiangiogens, including flutamide. So their relatability is going to be relevant in this case. And the other thing that I did want to mention is that just because studies showed that RU didn't go systemic doesn't mean that it can't. Uh, it just means that there weren't any notable systemic effects since they didn't observe any in the studies they conducted in the short period of time. Had they conducted long-term studies, 
uh, clinical studies on this, I'm sure that people would have experienced very good side effects. So it's definitely not true that RU's effect is only limited to the area of application and that it doesn't influence these serum androgen levels. Um, and also finasteride has been working fine for me. I don't have any side effects from taking finasteride and knowing that I'm okay with taking something uh, that is going to systemically inhibit DHT using medication that's been approved by the FDA for many years. Uh, many years of clinical research and clinical trials. That's my main reason why I'm sticking with finasteride. So I hope that kind of explains. Um, you know, RU does obviously have positive effects in hair growth for some people suffering from genetic hair loss, but the evidence is also outdated and it's extremely sparse. A lot of studies are from the late 1990s concerning animal studies, which doesn't always relate to humans. Uh, there's no FDA approval or a single phase two or phase three clinical trial and no long-term studies on the side effects. And some people, like I said, still you know, report side effects from using RU. And as I've mentioned, I don't know why they drop RU from further clinical trials, but the bottom line is that by taking RU58841, you are taking a great health risk. Um, I would always choose FDA approved drugs over research chemicals that especially has been dropped after the first clinical trial. Some people are saying that, you know, RU was dropped due to financial reasons, but I think that there is more to that. This is my speculation, but maybe it had some type of negative health effect or even cancer, we just don't know. Uh, and just because someone's used it for 10 years doesn't mean that there aren't gonna be any side effects later down the road. So you just never know. And it's a big risk that you guys have to weigh if you guys are considering on taking it. Now, if you guys really are insistent on taking RU, I would recommend getting blood tests uh, done routinely to make sure that everything is in order. I would also be wary of others trying to promote RU since usually it's due to the fact that they're in some type of financial gains, you know, commission. But like I said, the safer route is that that, you know, there are other treatment alternatives such as topical finasteride or even topical dutasteride, uh, which I'll cover in a separate video. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys exactly how you guys can make it at home. There's also micro dosing finasteride if you guys are having side effects, micro needling, you know, minoxidil, low level laser therapy caps. Um, so let me know in the comments if you guys have been using RU58841, uh, if you guys have seen some good results or even side effects. But pretty much, bottom line is my. Uh, you know, my reasoning why I'm not taking RU58841 is because of the safety profile, um, the unknown safety profile. We don't know what's gonna happen. There hasn't been any major long-term studies. So I'm gonna stick with something that's FDA approved. Um, so let me know what you guys think, but I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.